In this video, we'll cover the basics of soil moisture sensor installation. There are two different sizes of baseline soil moisture sensors. The large sensor that's roughly 18 inches long and the short sensor that's 5 inches long. They're interchangeable and do the same job, but people select one over the other based on where they fit. The large sensor fits into most landscape applications, while the short sensor fits well into pots and green wall applications. Where you place your soil moisture sensor is important. Place them in the top one third of the active root zone. So in turf, we're looking for about one to three inches of cover over the sensor. It varies for larger plant material, but it's still in that top one third of the root zone. Place the soil moisture sensor in a spot that's representative of the entire area you're trying to measure. Not in the driest location and not in the wettest location. You'll have the option of adjusting individual zones up or down during programming. If you have existing turf, remove the sod and set it aside. If it's a new installation, there's no plant material yet and it's even easier. As you're excavating, remove any large stones. Air pockets are the enemy here and we want good soil contact with the sensor. Before installing it, record that serial number and the location. Each sensor comes with two additional stickers that match the stickers on the device. Notice that the soil moisture sensor serial number matches the serial number on those two extra stickers. Use one of those extra stickers on an as-built plan and place another on a list to tell you where that device is located. Keeping track of the sensor now will make your life so much simpler when it comes to assigning later on. The active root zone in this turf area means just a few inches of cover, so double check the depth of the hole before installing a sensor and use a straight edge to measure down from. Set the moisture sensor horizontally and on edge. If it lays flat, it'll trap water and cause inaccurate readings. We want to measure the water as it passes by the sensor, not what's collected on top of it. When it's time to backfill the sensor, make sure that there's no rocks up against the sensor and that there's good soil contact, so gently tamp down the soil to eliminate air pockets. If you're installing the sensor in an existing turf area, now's the time to restore the sod. Now we need to deal with the wire. If this is a conventional wire installation, we'll run the wire all the way back to a valve box. Since this project is using two-wire, we can connect anywhere along the two-wire path as long as it's in a splice box. When connecting the sensor, use the DBRY6 splice that was included in the kit. Remember, industry standards are to always have splices in a box and not in a trench. Once the installation is complete, water in the sensor. This helps remove those air pockets that impact sensor calibration. If you use turf aeration equipment on your site, you'll want to take another step to avoid damaging the sensor. Core aeration tools can go deep enough to damage a soil moisture sensor, so the easiest way to avoid that is to not aerate over the sensor. Here are a few methods to locate and mark out a buried sensor. First, make note of the wire length and distance from the splice box during installation. This can tell you that a sensor is buried 23 feet north of the box. Another one is to set a grating feather or a plastic marker in the soil close to the sensor and then avoid aerating there. And another method is to use two measurements from buildings or trees to indicate where the sensor is buried. Later on, use the location where those two measurements cross to find the sensor and don't aerate there. We'll cover soil moisture sensor configuration and programming in another video. 